Alrighty, hello everybody, welcome back. We are continuing this whole endeavor. Cool. Um, what do we got? We need uh, more environment props. We've made some some tiles uh, and some sprites, and I think the sprite pieces are actually a lot more convincing in communicating what it is that we're trying to do here. So what I figured we can do is continue putting together some interesting industrial sprite pieces. All right. Let's see here. Hello, potato mato. Uh, let's set this back to 100%. Ooh, that's very close. Interesting. Am I the only one? So far. So far. I find that sometimes YouTube has this very weird thing. Um, it does this very, very weird thing where either I'm going to get my regulars or none of my regulars are going to get notifications and it's just new people. <laughs> so I've literally just begun. That is what we have going on here. Okay, so we set it zoom to 100%, which means we can take a screenshot here and make a new document based on the screenshot. Screenshot. There we go. Uh, nice. Now, move this over. Uh, let's get a new layer. And uh, yeah, off we go. We don't want anti-aliasing. So I'm thinking some sort of like a cross beam type deal. Uh, something that's nice and beefy. All right. Give it plenty of plenty of bluish color to make it look metallic. Okay, there we go. Cool. Maybe this could be some sort of a panel. Uh, what are we going to do here? Hmm. I think I'll just uh, do this. I'll take this piece. I did something. What happened? What did I do? Alrighty. That's good. Our transform tool doesn't do anti-aliasing, so that's good. Showing this stuff. Whoops. Nice. Okay. Uh, we made, if I remember correctly, a brush. I don't remember. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Nice. Dot, 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 dot. Let's make it on the separate layer, please and thank you. Mm hmm. Cool. And what do we want to do inside? I think what we want to do is make some sort of a some sort of a pattern, maybe? Crossbeam pattern? Let's see here. I'm going to give rounding. There we go. Okay. Fill that with white. And then... Okay, so there's got to be a way to transform the selection. Can we do that? Edit selection. Yes. There we go. 45. Let's do this. Yeah. Haven't wanted your vids for quite a while. I assume that's watched. 
<laughs> How dare you upload? I haven't wanted your video from you in a while. Um, is a video specifically? Well, it streams. Because uh, I stream re relatively regularly. Sometimes, you know, got to take a break. All right. There we go. That looks kind of terrible. Oh, it's just streams. <laughs> it sounds good, man. It's all good. It's all good. Just had to, uh, had to take some breaks. You know how it is. Can't be doing the same thing continuously, nonstop. Hmm. Maybe we don't need this. Maybe this is uh, a bit of of an over-engineered solution. Let's try regular brush, pixel brush. There we go. Oh, straight lines. Come on now. Interesting. Okay. So let's give it a transparency mask. It's going to be white. Then we're going to take this and then place it underneath. Convert to transparency mask. So now that should have two, except this needs to be inverted. There we go. And then if we duplicate this transparency mask, we can move it over. Ow. Dang it. I think we need to multiply. Oh, we can't multiply the transparency masks. Dang it. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. I'll just move it over like this. And then we'll fill it. Ooh. What in the shit? Okay, we've we've entered some some other dimension here. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, maybe we'll just do this. Take this, and then create the pattern. Oh, why is it copying both layers? Come on. There we go. Okay, that is interesting. I think I might have painted it on the same layer. Let's get that out. And then back in. There we go. This I don't have to touch. Hmm. I don't know if that pattern is really all that great, to be honest. Cool. So that's what we have here. We can now join this. I keep using Control J to join. Uh, let's go over here and convert to transparency mask. Except we need to invert it. There we go. So that's what I was trying to make. Perfect. All right. I'm gonna put this in the group. Um, this. This is join both of these together. Yes, all of these. Nice. All right, and now, well now, we need some fluff. Some fluff and stuff. Uh, let's get, it's gonna be on a separate layer so we don't screw this up. Uh, let's do pixel art and we've got our custom animated brush that we made a while back.
See, that's why you gotta have 2D artists on your team. This just takes up a lot of time. But it looks freaking cool. The problem is that it's... You gotta find 2D artists who are better than you. Because uh, that's something that I had uh, I had discovered the hard way because I actually ended up remaking a whole bunch of assets I had commissioned just because over time you just kind of look at it. You know, if you pay your money for it, you just kind of try to convince yourself. It's like, yeah, no, no, it's looking pretty. It's like going to a, to a, 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 a terrible barber. Yeah, that, that looks great. That looks great. Dies a little inside. <laughs> so, let's see. Vines. At some point I was like, you know what? Nah. We can do better. We just need to learn to enjoy the process instead of looking at it as a as a hassle. Live in the moment. Also being able to create animated brushes or just knowing how to create custom brushes really speeds up the process because you can create tools that help you get the job done faster. This shit just happened. Did I hit delete or something? <laughs> I just lost like half the half the stuff I painted. Oh, I deleted the layer. Whoops. Okay, gotta be careful on that one. Damn shortcuts. What are you up to, Potato Man? Potato Mato, excuse me. <laughs> Potato Man. Da, 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 da. Potato Man. I am Condiment King. All right, so that should be fine. We also need to add rust. For that, we're gonna use our pixelized dirt brush. Pick this color, so we're in the same relative value. Uh, let's get it to multiply or overlay. No, we can't overlay or multiply while it's in the folder. We have to make the folder be overlay or multiply or screen. Yeah, let's do multiply. Except, uh, yeah, this got to be really light. Let's actually go. Uh, that's a little bit better. Overlay. Yeah, I just want to make sure the colors mesh together. 
Have you heard what happened to the Cod Wars on mobile? I have not. What happened? Do tell. Give me that juicy, 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 juicy good scrutiny. What do they do? Wasn't optimized nicely, and the whole community disliked it. Now Activision is trying to optimize it. Interesting. Isn't that what also happened to Dragon's something Dogma 2 or whatever the heck is the name of the game? Aside from the fact of all the all the buy pay pay to something DLC stuff. Okay, instead of overlay, we really need to pick something that works. Uh, I guess we can't. Because the whole folder is set to... Dang it. The whole folder is set to multiply. Okay. Fine. Can we make the whole folder... Screen? Yeah, that doesn't look as good. All right, fine. We'll just match the color. Hmm. It's about heating and lag issues. It was uh interesting. Uh man, AAA gaming has just taken L after L this year. And on the other hand, a lot of like smaller teams are delivering pure gold. Who knows? Maybe AAA will learn. Okay, let's make this normal. Cool. Okay, that's pretty good. And we're going to take Rust. And here's what I'm going to do. We're going to attach Transparency Mask. And I'm going to go down to the base and select uh, the top and the bottom. Like this. And then we'll go back to the Rust. And then we'll pick a middle gray color and just fill that in inside. There we go. So the rust on the beams is a bit different. As a matter of fact, I could probably just go full black to hide it. Uh, that's interesting. There we go. Nice. Cool. This is the rust inside, and then I suppose what I can do is make another another group layer, give it that transparency, and this is going to be rust outside. Because otherwise you can kind of tell when something is being, uh, being painted over the entire prop. So technically the top of it would be would it be the top that's more affected by the rust, considering it's exposed to the light? Or would it be the bottom, considering that uh, that's where all the runoff tends to accumulate in? Hmm. Imagine working so hard on this art and players are going to ignore it. Um, The funny thing is, the way I've learn to look at it is that the 
what I focus is the overall experience and the overall experience is the amalgamation of the many, many, many little things. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like looking at a small a piece of the, of an actual mosaic puzzle and then thinking that is such a beautiful puzzle to bet people are going to ignore it. But when in reality, it's the entire mosaic piece, the art piece that ends up being the focus. So the overall quality of the piece is uh, compound to the quality of the individual pieces, the individual, individual parts. So, you know. Also, I think noticing a bad, uh, bad piece of art or level prop is probably more impactful negatively than not noticing a good piece of prop. You know, a good piece of prop is just sitting there uh, doing its job, not attracting too much attention. Okay, cool. So technically, out of this whole thing, we have three pieces. We have this one, the clean one. We have the rusty one. And then we have rust with vines in it for the outside piece. Beautiful. More rust to the uh, to the gods of chemical oxidation. Yes. More rust for the tetanus god. Okay. Perfect. So I do need to crop this. And as a matter of fact... Hmm. How are we going to extract this? Two, 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 two. We can do it like this. So we go into here. Oh yeah, I gotta save this whole thing. Art tag rise, assets, sprites, and then this is gonna be environment. Okay, so big beam. Big beam, cool. So to extract everything at once without having to crop it, we can use a script for export layers. Uh, and then we're gonna tell it to group as layers. So since everything in here is part of this group, is going to be treated as a single layer. We're going to do PNG and, most importantly, adjust export size uh, to the layer contents. So it's going to look at what is on this group and then cut off anything extra, and that's going to be the actual image. Uh, ignore invisible layers, yes. And I think that is it. Let's go to Arctic Rise, Engine, uh, Sprites, Props, yes. And then it is props, isn't it? Or is it environmental? Mm, my definition of a prop is pretty loose. Uh, cross beams. I have this here. So I guess I can just save it here. It is going to create another folder, though, under the name of Big Beam, Big Energy. Okay. That's exported. Let's pop back in here. We've got sprites, cross beams, and then big beam. But you can see that it's uh, it's nice and cropped. Group 2, that's what it's called. Beautiful. Nice. Uh, I'm just going to take that out of there. Let's get back in here. So another thing that we can do is, I guess we need a clean one, right? Do we need a clean one? Maybe for interiors. So we just disable that. Go right back in here. Click OK. Don't even have to close this. So I got to make a whole bunch of these. Industrial, you know, infrastructure props. What do you think I should make? What suggestions do you have? Okay, so this is group large beam rusty oh come on now what is it i like large beam rusty yes okay large beam clean and finally 
Got to go back here. We've got vines and rust. There we go. So we still have this. Export it out. Okay. Nice. And then large beam vines. Beautiful. Okay. So what do we do here? There's got to be behind the walls. I think this is going to be the one that uses the vines. Okay, and then place that right here. And the funny thing is we can resize these things as much as we want. Even maybe something like this. There isn't really any rule against improvisation. Okay. Okay. Hey, that meshes pretty well, I'd say. Cool. And then we can go into visibility, modulate, tone it down. There we go. Okay, what else do we need here? So this is the extraction point uh, or the entry point for the players to enter the level uh, after their shenanigans in the previous zone. And they're supposed to have an argument here and then they go through this area. Which, to be honest, these X-shaped beams, they look a little, a little weird, to be honest. Hmm. I guess we're just still experimenting. So much stuff that we have to figure out. Uh, what do we get here? If I hold control... Uh, you know what? Here's what we'll do. Copy this color. Um, pop up. There we go. We are going to reparent to a new node, which is going to be a node 2D node. Okay. So BG props. Let's say it's going to be BG industrial let's give it the same color we copied and now if i hold control i can insert things into that uh group and it's going to inherit the coloring which is perfect this is what we want We're going to make the beams that are inside of the light slightly less corroded. Mm-hmm. I feel like it should have a little more transparency. Uh, what should have more transparency? The, uh, the entire group? Oops. The thing with the leaves. Oh, this one, the big one. Um, there's no background here as of yet, so, and the, the entire level is just kind of affected, or not affected, I should say, by the lighting, so we can take a look at that afterwards. Uh, let's see. Let me double check this.
All right. Oh, where's my controller? There's my controller. And it's tangled. Dang it. There we go. Okay, so this is where we find ourselves. Um, maybe the camera limit could be set up uh, to have a limit right around here. Hmm. Or we could set up uh, designated look at zones, which are basically uh, when the when the characters enter them, they cause the camera to snap to a particular location. Okay, cool. All right. Not bad. Not bad. So where did we place the these little background components? Um walls. Okay. This would be vines front. Place it right here. I'm kinda of half tempted to just spend some time putting together the the actual level, but I know that I gotta you gotta make stuff first. Uh, some of these are really old vines, and they look like ass. Vine clusters. Vine mass. These are the new ones. Mm, yeah, that looks like choice. Vine segments. What are these vine segments? These are for vine uh, ropes, rope physics vines, like the chains. Okay, you know what? I don't like this. We're going to get rid of this. This sucks. But then again, should I maybe, instead of, in, instead of uh, replacing, should I maybe just paint over them? Because if I'm using them somewhere... You know, I doubt I'm using them somewhere. I think I might have been using them in a really, really old opener level. Let's see. Open an external program. No, nope, that's not what I want to use. Actually, can we set up an external program? External programs. Uh, raster image editor. Yes. Uh, we want Krita. Okay, so properties. Right there. Okay, where are you at? It doesn't have suggestions. Uh, you know what? I don't need suggestions. I'll just do this. Somebody's going ham on emotes there. There we go. Paste that in. Close. And then if I do open with external program. Yes. Nice. Okay, that's perfect. So I can just uh, go ahead and pick a brush. Okay. This time, probably going to go something mid-level. Okay, this brush is really dense. Need to ease up on the density. Also, it looks more like blotches than leaves. Hmm. Which is why I think this brush might be better. Uh, I don't, I'm not a fan of the transparency in the, in pixel art, uh, foliage. Okay. 
Also, I think I might might have gone a little too saturated. Okay, we don't need that anymore, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Make go slightly darker. Cool. All right. And then all I have to do is save. Yep. Beautiful. And that should just replace it. Okay. And then the second one. Same concept. There we go. Alrighty. We're going to go with the base color. Okay. Man, I got to make more brushes. This is a uh, quite convenient. I think for the darkest piece, we're actually going to make a layer underneath. Yes, there we go. That's what we should be doing. Don't paint over it. Paint under it. It's more difficult than mobile. Uh, more difficult than mobile? Uh, what's more difficult than mobile? There we go. Save it up. And game dev. Uh, for mobile or on mobile? Like, are you using uh, the Android Gadot export or something? Trying to develop directly on your phone? On mobile. So you have Gadot Engine running on the phone uh yeah um you know what something i have discovered a long while ago is um the apple bluetooth keyboard paired with an android um phone is a fantastic very comfortable combo for doing any sort of like text heavy uh work i do it uh, i use it for like script writing and stuff um whenever i'm kind of like busy or somewhere that don't have the computer. Uh, so yeah, having like a Bluetooth keyboard and like don't don't cheap out on the Bluetooth keyboard. Like, you know, we give Apple shit for a lot of stuff, but credit where credit is due. The, the keyboard, the external keyboard they have, mwah, just fantastic. Have that thing for like a good maybe seven years at this point. Still works like a charm. That thing has outlived so many shitty keyboards. Um, okay, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this real quick. Uh, can I... Can I join this? I probably can. It's using the same dimensions. So I think you could just do this. Group it. Okay, and then we're going to save this. No, not like this. We're going to... File, save as. Navigate to assets, sprites, foliage. Okay, so wide vines. And then, excuse me, we need to make this as a create a document. So once again, assets, sprites, foliage. Yeah, these were these were made before the the great drive crash of twenty three. All right, 
There we go. Okay. Cool. So I'll just place this on Vine's front. Okay, it's a little brighter than the other ones. Okay. There we go. Technically, it's in the foreground, but it still kind of acts as a background prop. Nice. All right. Well, that works. What's the difference between physics process and process? Process is where you put all of your logic. If you have a bunch of loops that loop through arrays, groups, large pieces of data, do a lot of analysis, let's say you have 100 enemies or 100 inventory items, and you want to go through each and every one of them and find a particular one by criteria, that would be logic. And you don't put logic into a physics process because physics process is locked to 90 frames per second. Um, and if you put a lot of logic level stuff, not only does it have to run the physics, but also your logic. And if it can't run that logic within 90 frames per second, it is going to be destroyed. Why is there a big black box to the left of my screen? Excuse me. Uh, let me just hide that. That was from yesterday. That's a webcam. Uh, right. So that's, uh, that's what that is. Uh, physics process is where you, you can overwrite physics. Um, like for example, if you have a rigid body, but you want to make sure the rigid body at no circumstance under no circumstance ever goes below a certain coordinate or certain, let's say, x, y, or z coordinate, then you can override it within the physics body. Um, if you don't do it in the physics body, if you're doing the process, the physics engine might still try to interfere with it and try to make it do something you don't want it to do. So physics process where you can overwrite stuff, physics process where you do your movements, anything based on like collisions, uh, ray casting, all that stuff, um, you can handle it there. You can also handle a lot of that stuff in the process function. Um, if you aren't too um, stressed over, let's say, the most up-to-date locations or coordinates in the, in the physics, which, you know, most, most of the stuff you don't really care. So yeah, had to find that out the hard way. By the way, don't put logic into a into the the process, a physics process. We have grass. That's very old grass. That grass looks like ass. Oh man, there's a lot of it too. God dang it! That's what happens when you try to uh, try to streamline the process of creating some sort of an asset but your streamlining process sacrifices quality this looks like anus um i tried to use a noise texture in order to diversify the the look but that's just not that's not good don't like that okay sorry for the distraction nah man that's fine Okay, I'm going to try to uh, do something here. There we go. Embrace asymmetry. Perfect. That looks a little bit better. Um, right. 
Now then. What else do we need? I believe I mentioned that there are these large blobs of empty soil ground texture that needs to be dealt with, covered up. So probably going to have to do something like that. Let's see. Let's see if we can make something here. Um, it looks like 512 by 512 would likely be a good starter resolution. Okay. Fairly desaturated because it should not take over our view. I tried to do this as a tile before, and it the the, the amount of repetition uh, made it a little too strong. Okay. Now, whatever values we're going to choose here, we can always make it darker in the engine. That's fine. So yeah, it was it was just really distracting before, uh, when it's a when it's a tile. And it's the funny thing is it was really distracting because it was repeating. Um, I think maybe adding a series of sprites like this would help create more organic look. Like the spider web, basically, yeah. It's kind of what I'm going for here. Okay think right there. That should be our whoops, our color range. I gotta say there's something interesting in the blackness of it. Maybe it's because it acts as a shadow. Hmm. Okay. Uh, we have clipping. That's not good. We don't want this thing to clip anywhere. Anywhere, nowhere. Okay. Is that good? Almost. Okay, so we'll put this in the group. Center it. Okay. Whoops. Yes. Okay. So large vine cluster one. Then we hide it and try that again. So we have three colors to work with. Start with the medium one. Is it three? Yes, except one of them, one of those colors was uh, adjusted. I should make a small palette. So we got this. We've got this. We've got the highlight. Although the highlight, frankly, could be a little bit lighter. There we go. I know that Krita has its own paletting tool, but I don't trust it. I don't trust it to be there. All right, so what should we do now? Uh, let's do like a small, small start type thing. Yeah, that's fine. I should probably start with the darkest piece first. Mm, 
you know, if I don't if I don't actually start with a particular order, I might end up with a with a mess. No rhyme or reason. So Yeah, sure. That's good. Looks like a crime scene. Okay. Also, I did this on the single layer, so that's fun. Um, my cluster two. I suppose that's fine. Mm-hmm. Looks like someone's falling. Pretty much, yeah. It's the uh the careful don't slip sign that you see on wet floors. Also, I need to make sure that I'm not just applying the highlights or the mids over everything. Okay. I think that works. that new layer all right Hello, Nicholas. Nice sprites. Nice sprites. Thank you. Okay, so we got this. We got this. The falling man. We got Be Not Afraid. Nice. I think I might actually want to go in here. Wow, I'm in video. Yes, you are. Just don't start selling uh, penis enlargement pills. I don't want anybody competing with my brand now. Okay, we'll just ease up on the highlights because, god damn, we just went nuts on this one. If everything is highlighted, nothing is highlighted. The only thing is that when you erase it, it doesn't have the same shape as when you paint it. So you gotta fix it up afterwards. <laughs> God, I can't unsee it now. <laughs> This one actually turned out pretty well. We see more of the uh, of the backdrop here.
We're just going to leave that there. Okay, beautiful. Uh, okay, we need to diversify the shapes. Maybe we can do some like... Try focusing the lighter bits uh, where the vines have more clusters. Where they're more concentrated. That Actually, I should try that. Hold on a sec. Um, What sprite is this? This is to cover large swaths of this uh, soil texture, dirt texture, to break up uh, break up the monotony. So um, it's kind of an experiment. We'll see how that plays out. Maybe it'll be okay. I'm gonna save this. Assets, sprites, foliage, soil, moss. Okay. So. It's a little too large. So we're going to try to create these sort of patches. And then we're going to concentrate the highlights closer to the middle where there is more of the greenery. And then the brightest highlight is even more concentrated to the center. Okay. <clears throat> it won't look good when there's a lot of them. Well, see, I guess we'll, we'll just have to test it, see how that turns out. Okay, so we got this, we got this one. This is, uh, oof. Hmm. Yeah, you can see the, <laughs> you can see the earlier ones have, have the vines kind of everywhere. Uh, maybe we can just ease up on some of this stuff. Just to equalize the styles. Focus the highlights more to the middle. And then the very far extremities are mostly just dark. Okay. I see that's the problem of painting everything all in one go. It's the fact that, uh, well, can't really change it. Ten eighty P loaded now can read the text on GoE. Well that's good. Oh uh, he has hair gloves and shoes. Yes. Nothing like good old pube mittens. Okay, 
I'm just going to go over this. And again, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that the style is more uni uniform bef between uh, all the different sprites. So if we decided to say the far extremities of the vines, of the moss, is going to have more dark in it. And then the highlights more focused to the center of mass. And then we got we to gotta fix these things up a little bit. I'm not too hot on this particular sprite, to be honest. This looks like ass. Go away. Okay. Let's get the brush. Yep, uh, you can make automatic brushes, uh, animated brushes especially, super handy in Critter. Uh, very easy to make too. Super handy. Okay, so this should be good. Uh, let's disable the background, disable the palette, and then we're going to export this all at once. Uh, let's do export layers. Whoops. Um, which layer is this? This is soil moss. Um, we can adjust it to the export size, PNG, treat groups as layers. I think that should be good. Ignore invisible layers. Nice. All right. Artec Rise. Engine. There is a whole lot of commotion happening outside. Fire trucks everywhere. Uh, sprites. Foliage. And it will just save it here because it's going to end up creating a new folder called Soil Moss anyways. Export it out. Expect like four people chatting in the chat. It is what it is. Curious, I think today YouTube decided, ah, it's new people day. None of my regulars have gotten the notification. Here you go. Sorry about that. Here's a bunch of new folks. Welcome. Cool. Uh, we are going to have to do something about the grass. You know, if we got to remake the grass, I might as well show you how to make the animated brushes because it's super easy. Uh, and we're on the subject of making them too. Foliage, soil moss. Okay, so soil moss goes on our walls. Ah, uh, we only exported one layer. Dang it. I guess we gotta... Oh. Well, yeah. Duh. If I only enable one layer, I'm only gonna get one layer. That looks cool. See, we can actually combine multiple mosses together to get it to work. Uh, let's get that again. Export layers. Select the file. Adjust. PNG, ignore invisible, group as layers, and dang it, we should remember the last location though. Foliage, and then vine, what is it, soil moss is going to create the folder, boop, got a bit of a clip right there, any day now, come on, there we go, I'm not going to close that. A hey, one, two, four, five, six, seven. Nice. It's because we deleted something. Okay. So that's what we got. And then, you know, we can overlap this stuff. Hey. There's our falling man. I can't uh, click on anything, though. Oh, because I... Ah, okay. We probably shouldn't be putting it into the tile because you can't actually select anything while you're in tile mode because tile mode forces you into the tile painting tools. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and not do that. Reparent to new node. Node to D node. And then place that here. This is soil vines. Did potato man leave? I don't know. Maybe lurking in the background. Soil vines. There we go. No, he's there. <laughs> 3K subs and views in the stream. Um, I think it's just a matter of the type of audience it is. Because my sort of content, I suppose, uh, 
appeals more to other developers. And, you know, developers tend to spend time developing games. <laughs> Especially if I'm, you know, streaming right now, which is kind of kind of in the middle of the work day. You know, folks got to put food on the table. It is what it is. If I was making shit post content, I'd probably uh, have a lot more views. Okay, so this is the idea. We just want to break up the monotony. And uh, we do know that it's not supposed to really take over our attention. So we're going to tone it, tone it down and also give it a little bit of the same color as the backdrop, which is orange. Yeah, kind of like this. Seven people now. Eh, it's fine, man. No need to stress over it. We can also flip these things. And also, finally, there is uh, the fact that our environment is currently being uh, currently too light. All right? Where is the... There is no modulate. Hey, okay. So we can add a canvas modulate. And then the canvas module, it could be toned down like this. We can give it a bluish look to it, which means the directional light can be given a bit more energy. And then we can also... Sylvester! Mmm, good day. Nice. Another po another person in the chat. Fantastic. Hey, as long as you folks are uh, are new here, I think the channel that probably needs the most uh, subs and the most comments is the channel that me and my buddy run for when we meet to get uh, get together like two, three times a year and just spend the entire day playing games and recording. Um, it's called Retroactive Gamers. There should be a link in the description. Do a favor. Uh, if you want, drop a sub there. It'll help us with YouTube algorithm being like, oh, another gaming channel. It's not like we don't have... Uh, a hundred of those coming up every day. Uh, what do I want to do here? I want to get a, a canvas layer. Canvas layer. Not canvas layer. No, parallax layer. Parallax layer. There we go. Let's get a color rect. Give the color rect dimensions of what? Uh, 2048 by 2048. Now it's right here. And this is supposed to be a sky blue. Then we're going to set the mirroring 2048 by 2048. And now I think I've seen a tweet about real time parallax background performance. Whoop, that's not the right level. Perfect. Dakota. Good day. All right, so that's what we're looking at. Okay, everything is kind of surrounding the level. Um, it's a little dark. Can ease up on that just a touch. And then we can start doing stuff like placing holes in the in the wall, light sources. As a matter of fact, you know what? I've been stressing around with trying to make holes in the wall be made out of. Um, uh, out of cutting out tiles and making them in, in the tiles, but I can make holes in the wall as separate sprites. And I think that would be a heck of a lot easier to do. And I can use it as a light source too. Huh. Oh, man. That is way better than what I was doing before. Okay, cool. Um... What is this game about? Uh, it's a story that follows a group of characters who find themselves on an experimental island uh, who are trying to get off the island uh, and they have to go through a series of uh, very gruesome platforming trials. Okay, what do I think you, about Unity? Never tried it. Uh, my only knowledge of it is the shenanigans that they're pulling on developers, so you might imagine not good. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, that's what it is. Yeah, just a little, as a little preview. This is what we got. It's one of the levels I've fully decorated. And it's co-op, too. Cool. Although when you're playing solo, you still have to have a second character to... Whoa. Ah, dang it. All right. <laughs> still have to have a second character. Uh, to have the characters talk and argue between each other and forward the story. Okay, before I forget, let's... Uh, let me do this. I'm going to do a light 2D node real quick. Just uh just so I don't forget a particular effect here. I want to I want to make ambient glow for this light. Uh so we're going to go light masks and open that up. Let's get a nice large light mask. I could do a gradient, but the gradient has very harsh endings. So we're just going to do this light mask. How big is this? 512 by 512. Let's do this. Light mask 512. Give it a name so I can see it. Bam. And then we can take this. Uh, oh man, that looks beautiful. See, when you start adding lighting to your game, so even if it's a 2D game, with even with very simple lighting, it's just like night and day. It's a world of difference. So if I do this, and then give it just a little bit of extra light like this. Take a look. I mean, Zeker's made 100 million as far from Game Letha Company. I mean, that's good for him. That's perfect. Ah, oh, man, this looks awesome. All I did is just add a little bit of light. That just brings out the dynamics. It's one of those things where I I gave Godot a try before I gave Unity a try, and Godot was like, I got you, bro. I got everything you need. He's a rich man. Yes. He has a, uh, he has a mighty bar to strive for as an indie developer. Man, I just get... I just get motivated and excited anytime I hear uh, an indie dev making it in life. I'm like, yeah, good for you, man. Let's get some. Let's get some work done. Let's get this money. <laughs> okay, let's get um, let's get some lights. I suppose light holes in here. Interesting cylinder effect. Uh, it was an interesting discovery. I think I was making a tutorial for Game Maker Studio to uh, how to make a FNAF shader. Uh, for the very first FNAF game, they, uh, the, Scott had this interesting effect where it's a 2D game, but it distorts the screen to the left and right. Um, and uh, I was like, okay, I can figure ha figure out how to make this and then make a tutorial out of it. And I did. And then I ended up applying it. I don't know why, but I ended up applying it to the 2D platformer game. And I was like, this is an interesting effect. I'm going to keep it. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make some holes. Okay, this is going to be light holes. Let's go sprites. Um, asset sprites, where are we going to put this? Light holes, what are we doing here? Um... I guess light holes is exactly what we're doing here, so we're just going to save it. Nice. Yes, hype. No, don't hype this channel. <laughs> this is the wrong channel to hype. Go to Retroactive Gamers channel. Hype that one. God damn it, we need all the help we can get with that one. Dude, so many times we get a comment that says, You guys have great content. I don't understand how your channel is, is not promoted. Such underrated content. But then nobody ever comments, nobody ever drops a sub. That doesn't even matter. The subs don't matter nowadays. It's all about interactions. Nobody ever comments. And then people wonder, why is my favorite channel not doing so well? It's not about subs. It's about those juicy comments. Okay. So, let's uh, let's get some 
some holes in here. Um, hmm. Should we do this subtractive or? Yeah, that's actually way better. So we're going to do this. And then. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I need to get rid of the roundness. Subscribed. Thank you. Appreciate it. Highly appreciate it. Yeah, if you think this uh, this channel is fascinating, wait until you you hear us go through our shenanigans. Oh, okay. So we can we can go through this in a subtractive manner like this, and then make some very interesting holes in the walls. As long as we avoid straight edges, that should be good. Nice. Why are there 10 people watching with four likes? Lurkers, man. Lurkers. We know you're there. We know you're watching. We know what you did last summer. <laughs> okay. So, um, we might actually make these into scenes. That's right. We might actually make these into scenes so that we can do some interesting stuff with the lighting. Can I get white color? Thank you. And then... Hmm. I could also do this with the... Uh, with masks. Creepy interactive. Hey! Look at that. There's our regulars. Okay, that's good. What are these new names? I know, right? YouTube has blessed me with the new people. Yes, yes. You merely adopted the obscurity. I was born in it, molded by it. I haven't seen subscribers until I was a man. Yeah, we're gonna try to try to make some larger, larger shapes here. Also, I need to do a quick test with these ones. Oh, Mickey Mouse! Oh, Mickey Mouse! All right, so that's four. We've got four. Potato tomato. I'm not new. Sorry. Sorry. My bad. I have a uh, I have really bad memory remembering people I've interacted with in the past. To the point where I actually can't remember almost anybody from like high school. I had somebody reach out to me. It was like, hey, remember when we used to chill? And I'm like, no, I'm sorry. Oh, that was... I'm sure that was disappointing on their, on their end, but... That's what happens when you don't interact with anybody. And then suddenly come back into their life and like, hey. I have this brand new opportunity for you. It's a grand business adventure. You get to uh, you get to work under me, and then you get to find uh, people who want to work with you. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think we can automate this export. We're gonna have to do one by one. That's okay. We only have a few of them. Uh, now this is supposed to be not just a hole in the wall. It's also supposed to be kind of light. So. Let's do this. 
is that going to get clipped? That might end up getting clipped. Let's... Uh, okay. The whole idea is that this is going to be used as a light and as a light to denode. <laughs> All right, let's give it a try. So let's export this. Uh, this got to go to our tag rise engine models. No sprites. And this is light holds. Uh, this is going to be PNG. And this is light hole one. You're a light hole. That last trip to Taco Bell really destroyed my light hole. All right. Perfect. I gotta go. Sounds good, man. Appreciate the company. Appreciate dropping in. There we go. All right. So, first of all, I think we're gonna have to make this into a sprite. Light hole. Light hole. Light hole. <laughs> uh, ah, right. Okay, so the light holes have to be exported twice. One with the background, one without the background. Got it. Okay, that's fine. So, this is light hole light one. Editing names outside of uh, outside of Godot is a little sketchy. There we go. And then we're going to go to Engine, Sprites. Ah, well, here's the problem. This is supposed to be a light mask. And then this is supposed to be an actual sprite. Light hole, light hole, light hole, light hole. There we go. Okay. So now, um, considering that we need to place a sprite, place a light to denote, match the color, match the position, I think it might actually be better if we just uh, do this as an object. So... We go here, set this up, so sprite, and then we're also going to do a light, point light 2D, which is going to sport a light mask that matches, hello, there we go, matches the same style, cool. All right, let's save this object. And I think this would be lighting. Sure. Cool. Uh, right, so what do we do here? If we place this in here, instance scene here, whoo, that is large, but that is large, but that is looking interesting. Uh, let's do... So we need a bunch smaller pieces. We need to also make the texture not be pulverized. I think that's okay for the light, though. All right. Let's, uh, let's handle this thing first. Let's attach a script. We're going to program it to be dynamic. Sprites, scripts, excuse me, scripts, uh, lighting. Okay. And now we're going to make var. Um, so sprites and then var light masks. Okay. And then what we're going to do is drag and drop light masks in here. 
All right, preload those and then hold control, let go. There we go. Nice. And then we're going to make an export variable. Uh, type zero. And then we're going to make a set get function. New value. Uh, type is going to be set to new value. And uh, we need to make it change the style. So uh, let's make a function uh, set type or set whole type. It's a function. If I define it correctly. Okay, we're just going to run this function here. And then all we have to do, talk to the sprite, set the texture to be one of the textures from the sprites, which one is going to be determined by the type. And then same thing, point light, texture, or is it light mask or whatever the heck the texture? Yeah. That's the name of the property. And then same thing. It's just going to match the corresponding sprite. So one, one, two, two. So if we choose the second one here, it'll choose the second light mask here. Because they were exported at the same time, they should match just fine. The last thing we need to do is set this to be a tool. Tool script. And there we go. Now, is it going to require me to restart the whole thing? No, it won't. Look at that. Uh, but that looks stretched. Hold on a second. Wait, does it look stretched? 256. No, not really. It's just 256. Maybe that's just me. Uh, is it just me? Yeah, no. No, it's definitely stretched. Uh, oh, that's because I nested it inside of a point light. Okay, reset, reset. And that's why it was so big. Okay, got it. All right, so that's good. And then let's place another light 2D point light. This one's just going to be the regular light. Uh, which, to be honest, okay, we're going to have to give ourselves the ability to adjust each one of these. So let's make another export. Uh, var ambient ambience size 1.0. I think just a single value is going to be okay. Maybe. Yeah, well... That's fine. We'll we'll work with it. If we need to change something, we'll change something. And then we're going to do set new value. It's going to be ambient size, new value. And then when we change that value, we want ambient size dot. There's a property here that we can change specifically, but it's really, there we go, texture size. Texture size. Is that it? Texture underscore scale. Cool. Texture scale. Set it to ambient size. And that should be it. Okay. Now I don't see the ambient light here yet. But that's because it's been set to zero. There you go. So you can see we can change how much this little hole in the wall can adjust the lighting. Now, what do we have, what do we have here? Should it be blue? Like this sky blue? Hey, we can make it blue. And it doesn't affect the light either. Which may or may not be a good thing. Hmm. That looks good though. And frankly, that looks better than... If I were to try to do this with uh, a, whatchamacallit, 
if I were to try to do this with this by cutting out holes in the tile. And it's easier to set up too. Because I can just take this, duplicate it, and then swap out to a different style. Ah, man. I should have done this a while ago. This is way better. Okay. Okay, now we can't go too high because we don't have the styles necessary for it. That's looking good. Uh, we should technically be able to place it behind the background if we really wanted to. Or behind these backdrops. All right, cool. Nice. I love it. We could also program it to make to pick its own randomness. Uh, so when we duplicate it, it will uh, make its it will randomize itself, and then it will um, uncheck its own randomness afterwards. There we go. Should we enable shadows here? It's ambient lighting. I feel like that shouldn't be necessary. Hmm. Okay. Cool, I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. Oh. Come on. That's the one thing about the lights is that when you when you try to grab them, they uh they don't want to be grabbed. So yeah, you see that. And there's no way to like block a light node, is there? To not be grabbable. That sucks. Okay. Right. Now then. So, conceptually, this works. I have a feeling that we could potentially go into the code and give it a color selector also. Export ambience color. We're going to make it of type color and then equals to color white and then it's a variable of course there we go all right and then we do set uh we're gonna have set new value push the new value back into the ambience color and then what we need to do is talk to the point light color get the ambience color in here and that's it by default they're all white so that's fine go back here so now I can select all of these light holes and oh one of them was what the? Oh, that one of them is a point light. There we go. So, grab the white color. But now we can give it a slightly bluish tint. Yes, no. Oh, that's the wrong light. Got it. Hmm. We want ambient light to have that color. Although maybe both of them should have that color. There we go. Let's try this. All right. Yeah, nice. Oh, that's good. That's way better. All right. No to bed. How much time do we have? How much time do we have for these shenanigans? Dead Island is on sale. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Not too shabby. I think maybe something could be done about the sprites, though. Do 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 sprites of the vines. 
maybe we can embrace a black outline. Not at the outline, but the, the really dark lines here. Uh, hmm. Let's do node. Whoops. Control A. Node 2D. And then we're going to call it light holes. There we go. Place all of the light holes in here. And then I'm going to lock it and lock the children so I can't move. Uh, I can select other stuff uh, without having to do that on every single light. There we go. Back. Nicholas, good day. Welcome back. All right. So. Soil vines. This is what we have here. Yeah, the blue and the, the red are really clashing together. Hmm. We could do something like canvas modulate. Take this. Drop this to make it really dark. So it's, you know, out of the, out of the view. Texture size could be increased. Guys, I got, somehow got fireballed by Trident in Minecraft. Man, I haven't touched Minecraft in so long, I'm actually kind of afraid. <laughs> I'm afraid of... Uh, oh, I haven't touched Minecraft since 2016. So, the amount of all this new stuff that's in the game now kind of makes me... Uh, kind of makes me a little intimidated to try it again. <laughs> like, uh, what is it? Are the screamer guys in the caves? Is that a thing, or is that somebody uh, just making a creepy pasta or something? Hmm. You know, maybe we should have two color selectors here. One for the color of the glow and the sprite. And then one for the color of the ambience. All right, so let's try this. Export var sprite color. Dang it. Come on. Color, and it's going to set to color dot white. And then set new val. Okay, we're going to populate the value into the variable, and then shortly after, um, we have point light 2D and we have ambient light. So this is going to go away from here, and then in here, and then the sprite modulate whoop, is going to be set to this color instead as well. And then we're not talking to the sprite ever again. As a matter of fact, I'll take this. Set type is not necessary. Just pop it in here. Whew. This first time I saw set get was used in the export variable. Hey, look at that. Somebody learned something from these live streams. Yeah, dude, that's like super handy, especially if you make it a, a tool script, because then... If, when you um, export, when you change the export variable, the set get immediately detects it, and then you can make it execute, like, apply the color, apply the sprite, change the, you know, if you have, like, 20 bush sprites, it'll just immediately change it right in the editor. So, yeah, it's, like, super handy for, like, tool making. Uh, do, 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 do. Your game look good. Did you make the assets yourself? Yes, I did. Uh, yes, I did. There we go. Yeah, man, super handy stuff. So I can do stuff like 
Hold on, let me let me test if this actually works okay. Uh, so we have the sprite color, sprout color is what I call it here. Let's reset this. All right, so right now it's white, and then I can I can change it to what do we have here? I think I need to to oh do we have errors? We don't have errors. Let me focus on one light one at a time. Okay, so we have ambience color and we have this one. I think I might need to double check something. Sprite color, color white. New value gets forwarded here. All oh, right, it's using ambience color. That's why. All right. One more time. There we go. Now we can change that. And then the immediate glow is also changed. All right, so we're going to go for like a sky blue with white with just a hint of it. There we go. But the ambience color can really lean in on it if we want it to. Cool. All right. So that works. I can tell you little by little this game starts to look less and less like ass. Can we get the starting point in here? And the more I'm thinking about the way the progression of this game goes, um, of the levels, the more I'm actually thinking that I should probably start uh, probably start making the cutscenes as comic strips. Okay, we can just do... Oh, This game has great graphics. Thank you. Uh, you can already get this game on Steam, but it is the old version made with Game Maker Studio. And uh, this, this is going to be replacing that version. The version on Game Maker Studio is kind of like... You can, you can feel the learning process being learned. I got... I can't wait to write... Oh, music for it. Jesus, I'm dead. Jesus has nothing to do with this. Jesus is like, what do you want me to do? Get good, bro. <laughs> oh, no. Gen Z Jesus. That's why he's got the Z in his name. Oh, dang it. All right. It's fine. Let me test this one out. What's the name of the game? R Tag Rise. Okay. Finally, jiggle jiggle. This is uh, starting to actually look like it has sense of direction now. I got tired of t staring at the blanks, uh, blank tiles all the time. But yeah, lots of cool ideas, especially painting the holes this way. Yeah, that is really cool. Now, of course, we can't see anything behind it, but we could always change that. Because Godot 4 has uh, sprite masking. Oh, we got this stuff happening here. Uh, that's because our our uh, parallax background isn't large enough. So let's do twice the size, 4096, 4096. And then the parallax layer will be mirrored, 4096, 4096. Cool. When it's done, we'll be able to download it. Yes. Uh, I think I was too slow on that answer. You know what? I'm pretty sure the sound module shouldn't be broken here. Concave camera effect. Yeah, man. It's, uh, I think it's like one of the identifying staples of this game. Makes it a little bit less flat. Which is a weird thing to say for a 2D game. Uh, let's see. Music. Music handler. Zone OST. So zone OST just starts right away. Uh, we need to have a list of soundtracks, which is handled by the audio handler, which is a singleton. Music handler. Um... Windy Ambience. I think that's what it is. 
Well, is it Windy Ambience? This, we have OST list and we have Ambience list. Which I should probably separate. Or maybe not. Uh, if I separate it, I'll have to do, have two pieces of code that handle the two variables. All right. I guess that's just the ambience key. I don't hear it. Oh, no, I hear it. Nice. It's uh, one hour and 40 minutes. Yeah, I'd say we achieved a, a nice nice chunk of work here. Okay. Oh, that's cool. You can click on the audio link and have it uh, open up as a resource if it's a valid one. Oh, that's awesome. Not all of them have a preview, though. But maybe that's because not all of them are named the same way. I think I, I, think I went on a renaming spree there. Let's see. Audio music. Windy ambience. Yeah, see, that one pops up with the suggestion. Then we have solemn turn. Hi. Hello. Hmm. Which one do you like most making 2D or 3D? I don't have a preference, actually. I have projects that are both 2D and 3D games uh they all have some really phenomenal experiences to deliver as i'm making them uh just you know it, it's i think it's not as black and white as that 2d or 3d i have ideas game ideas some are better to represent in 2d some are better represented in 3d okay we have trial course ambient does this work no why is this not here? Trial course ambience level. Oh, maybe it's because it's an OGG file. All right. Fire enough. Place it in here. Pixel graphics are so overused, especially with indie games. Um, I think it's the approachability of it. When you're an indie, um, doing high quality graphics is very, very time consuming, especially when you have to deal with stuff like burnout. I'm playing the wrong level. Um, when you have to deal with stuff like burnout, it's very discouraging to try to go for like higher resolution uh, graphics. I think when people get into teams, that's when it gets a little bit easier. Also, there's a there's a good way to do pixel art, and there's not a good way to do pixel art. And I think a lot of the times it's like when it's pixel art, it's the 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 bad kind of pixel art. So yeah, pixel art really gets a gets a bad rap because nobody complains about let's say what is it, Swarm, Scorn. What's the name of the game? Um, let's see. Let me go up here. What's the name of the game? Crawl. Uh, nobody complains about pixel art and crawl game. Because that game has gorgeous pixel art. Like, absolutely phenomenal work. Um, you know, none of these are animated GIFs. Let's just take a look at the Steam page. Like, look at this. So you can play the hero for a time, casting unnamed rituals in the dark. But when death does come in those shadows where the old gods wake, you are not free to die but rise again as abominations. Deranged and delirious, you become the beasts. You so yeah, it's like nobody's complaining about this game having pixel art right because it, it it looks freaking gorgeous it's awesome it's it's a phenomenally executed uh pixel art game so you know 
<laughs> so a lot of beginners tend to go for pixel art because it's manageable. I wouldn't say it's easy, right? If you if you want it to look good, you still have to have a sense of animation and motion. You still have to be able to animate things in a believable way, so you have to have experience in animation. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, that's what it is. Uh, then why not use free assets? I mean, who says people don't? I'm pretty sure when you get like right in the beginning of it, um, people use free assets. But uh, some people just want to get good at, you know, doing animations and art and pixel art themselves. The only way to do it, the only way to get good at it is to be bad at it in the beginning, but still keep doing it. That's the only way you can you can get better at it. And uh, and honestly, this is my perspective on getting practice too. I never practice for the sake of practicing. Um, I literally just try to make the games that I try to make. And that is my practice. And yes, certain things will look like ass. Um, even today, I was going through the vines and I was replacing some of the old vines I made, but the new ones look better. And, you know, the only way I, I could make the better ones is if I made the shit ones first. <laughs> Not explicitly, but that's just how you learn. Um, I, you know, I, I generally find, and this is just my personal take, but generally find practice for the sake of practice to be kind of pointless. Um, when I try to practice, I, I literally just make the assets for my games. Uh, somebody asked, how do I make the, the cool effect on the camera? It's a post-processing effect. Um, I have a... What is it? I think I have a singleton that handles screen effects. And then this has the post-process shader, which basically does this. There we go. Takes the screen space. Um extracts the vector from it and then uh, adds value to it based on the Y position um, and then takes the screen image uh, and then starts distorting it based on our math earlier, the screen UVs. Uh, there we go. That's the screen, screen texture right there. So yeah, just takes whatever's already on the screen and then bends the heck out of it. And uh, that's what it is. I call it the FNAF shader. <laughs> All right. Cool. The guys who make pixel art might have spent three years making the art. Yeah, pretty much. And they could have uh, they could have started with like bad art, and then as they continued improving, just replaced it. It's totally a uh, totally a way to do it. Okay, so I think I need to direct the players this way. All right, let's try this. Instance here, light hole, nice. So we can do this. Ambient size can increase. Never made a game before. Always thought about it. Well, I mean, if there was a time to give it a try, I th I'd say you're living in the pretty much the golden age of free tools that you can use to make this happen. Creator for pixel art or high res art, texturing, um, Blender for 3D. Oof. Okay, we need to put some limits on that. Uh, let's go here. Let's say export range 0 to 100. But we're going to go here and say if the new value is above the, let's say, the size of the sprites we have to work with. Larger than sprites size, uh, which has to be larger or equals. Then return. There we go. So this way we can prevent it from going, there we go, from going higher. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can actually clamp it. So we're going to say new value, 
is the size of the array minus one, and then we return. Nice. All right, that works. I'm just going to copy this color, paste it in here, and then copy this color, paste it in here. Beautiful. I feel like I'm distracting you with my art questions. I would rather have the company. I can always work offline if I didn't want the distractions. We could also rotate this thing. Nice. Man, this whole, whole, pun intended, um, solution is actually way faster. Way faster. Nice. Just don't know the type of game to make right now. Dot and Blender. Uh, two things you have. Uh, I suppose you just got to spend some time thinking about what you want to make. That's a, a really weird thing because I've never had a shortage of ideas of what to make. You got more ideas than what I know to do with. Okay, where's my mouth in the side tile? I think it's in the background. Do, 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 do. That's not it. I need uh, this one. Oh, yeah. Need to be here. Except cave BG. There we go. So instead of these. We just work with this. Okay, now that's not the only thing that I wanted to make though. Um, we do have some decoratives that we'd like to place here. So let's add note 2D. Okay, we're going to make sure this doesn't have transforms. It does have transforms. Okay, that's because I nested it inside. Location-wise is fine where it is. Sure. Okay, place the light to D here. And then let's get another point light. Uh, we are going to give it another light mask. Where is it? Sprites light masks, and then we have a nice gradient light mask we can use to create some light rays. Fake that effect. Mm, there we go. I think that's the one. Yes. Okay, now because I'm located among other lights, I might want to block that. We'll just kind of approximate it here. Nice. Now this is going to take a lot of time. But oh boy, does it produce a really cool effect. Discovered uh, this little trick when I was working on... Oh, you know what? Everything should probably face the same angle as this this big light. 
when I was working on the uh, the little web platformer Ulysses. There we go. Which means I should actually uh I should probably spend some more time on that. Get the web games up and running. Disposable link has been sitting without any progress on it. And there we go. The game appears to take place in spherical worlds. Is this aesthetic? Yeah, it's just the aesthetic. So lock this up, unlock this up. Hey, is there a scale? There is no scale. Okay, cool. Pop, pop, boop, boop. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. The only problem with using lights is that they tend to blow out the colors on the characters. So whether or not that's a big deal, I guess we'll have to see. Oh, we got that, which is a little interesting. Play some collectibles here. Cool. Oh yes, and we have we have this exit over here. We don't really need any light holes here. Actually, no, no, we don't. We do need a one big light, however. Move it here. Come on. There we go. Something like this. Except it's a little too tall. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, everything we've worked on so far has pretty much been all aesthetics. Everything is, uh, what, sprites, tiles? No tiles, just sprites. That's some really cool solutions. Nice. All right. It is all narrative. It is 5 o'clock, I think. Whoa, let's not break my keyboard slash phone. Uh, let's uh, wrap it up for this video. And then uh, I'll have an hour for a break. Cool? Cool. All right, fellas. If you haven't already, um, forget about this channel. Drop a sub onto the Retro to Gamers channel. Link in the description. This is me and my buddy playing, uh, playing my good old favorite uh, childhood games. Having a lot of fun. Making memories. Yeah. Drop a sub there. Drop a comment under some random video. Help YouTube algorithm be like, Ah, yes! Engagement. Mm. And uh yeah, maybe we'll depending if I have the energy, maybe I'll be able to do a little bit more in the evening and get some progress done. Cool. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate the company.